from WXOJLP Northampton, 103.3 FM, your Valley Free Radio Station. Welcome. I'm Warren Odess Gillette, and this is A Baha'i Perspective. <music> Welcome to A Baha'i Perspective. I recorded an interview with Jim Cribb on November 4th, 2019. Jim is an author, photographer, and filmmaker whose latest film release is called Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey, which is a documentary of one woman's choice to find joy in dying and her unforgettable discoveries along the way. We discuss the film and its societal implications, and we share an audio clip from the film. We also discuss other works that Jim has produced. I started the interview by asking Jim where he grew up and what was spiritual life like growing up. I grew up right across Canada because I was a Navy brat. My dad was uh, in the Navy and I traveled right from coast to coast. I was born on the East Coast in Nova Scotia. I think I went to nine schools in 11 years, so I had quite a mixture of experiences as I was growing up. In terms of my spiritual life, I grew up as a Catholic. My mom was French-Canadian. We went to uh, church on Sunday. I was involved, quite involved with the church, actually. Even when I was getting into my early teens, I was, uh, well, actually just before my teens, probably about 11 or 12, I I was an altar boy. Got my interest in, uh, in spiritual matters through that. What was your spiritual journey that ultimately led you to the Baha'i faith? How did you find out about the Baha'i faith? I had a great love for Christ growing up as a Catholic, but I always had trouble with my position as a person in the concept of a Catholic kind of relationship. I always felt so positive about Christ, but I didn't feel there was a lot of positiveness in what I was feeling around me. And my sister, um, Pat, actually heard about the Baha'i faith uh, first when we were living in Montreal. I was 15 at the time. She shared with me a a conversation she had with a a friend, and there were firesides, which are uh, kind of a gathering in usually in Baha'i homes to share with people about the Baha'i faith. And so I ended up going to one of these. And on the very first fireside that I attended, um, a quote from Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, was read that that really um, struck me. And the, and the quote was from a, a book called The Hidden Words. Essentially, he said, Noble have I created thee, yet thou hast abased thyself. Rise then unto that for which thou wast created. And I really felt that my love for Christ and and the Creator was fulfilled in just that one statement. And so it really attracted me. And I adopted the faith very soon thereafter and lived my life as a Baha'i. So I'm speaking with Jim Cribb, author, photographer, and filmmaker, who just released the film Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey. But before we get into the film, Jim, you are a photographer, and you've traveled all around the world as a photographer. Can you tell us about where you've been and what you photographed and any memorable experiences that you had doing that? Sure. I I began life in terms of photography when I was living on the west coast of Canada, which is where I live now, and I've actually spent most of my adult life. I was living on Vancouver Island off the coast of British Columbia, and I'd mentioned that my dad was in the Navy, and he had been a, a scuba diver, and I was scuba diving under his tutelage when I was 10 or 11 years old, so I was familiar with marine environments, and I was always taken by the beauty. But I was particularly struck when I started doing scuba diving on the west coast of Canada with the beauty of the life there and the diversity. I decided I wanted to be a marine biologist, so I enrolled at the University of Victoria 
and I lasted about, I think, about 10 days or something. I wasn't much into university life, and so I quit, got a refund on my tuition, and invested that money in some camera equipment, and so began my journey. And uh, I am so taken um, when I am underwater uh, photographing marine life. It is an experience that I don't associate with anything else that I've known. It's um, something I can't really describe other than through my photographs, but it's beautiful. And uh, so I did that for a number of years, and I photographed here on the West Coast. Andrea, my wife, and I, we moved to the Caribbean for a fairly short period of time, about six months, to the French West Indies. I was able to um, photograph the marine life around the island of Guadeloupe, where we were living. It was the same area, actually, where Jacques Cousteau established a, a marine environment, and I used to dive there and became quite enamored with it. Uh, and then we actually went to the Galapagos Islands and um, spent time there. I spent, again, about six months photographed that area and I've done two other spots as well but those were the three main areas where I spent my time photographing and um, we have published books on each of those areas two of them were by Oxford University Press the one on the Pacific Northwest here and on the Caribbean and uh, we did one through um, Firefly Publishing out of um, Central Canada on the Galapagos. And would folks be able to find those books on your website, jmcrib.com, by any chance? They could. Yeah, there's a, a menu choice there for books, and if you go there, you can, you can see the books. So I'm speaking with Jim Cribb, author, photographer, and filmmaker, who released the film Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey. But there is another film project that you had done prior to Death by Joy, about Baha'u'llah, the prophet founder of the Baha'i Faith. Can you tell us about that project? I can. As I mentioned, I was a Baha'i when I was uh, 15, and I'm 63 now, so I've been a Baha'i for a number of years. And Andrea and I went to a um, international conference in 1992 in New York City. And it was attended by people, Baha'is, from all around the world. It was a remarkable experience for me. And, of course, in 1992, I became a Baha'i in 1971. So I had been a Baha'i for almost 20 years. And I didn't realize how little I knew about the founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah. And in that was planted a seed for me to start looking more into his life. And as I did, I decided to express it through uh, through a film. So I worked with a number of Baha'is um, who did c contributions in various ways to the film. It was quite a journey. I was able to get into the, go to the Holy Land and look at the archives there and, and pull out information from there and uh, perhaps the most interesting part for me was to travel and um, record stories of people's experiences um, and expressions through the life of Baha'u'llah. And that I got to meet so many neat people in so many different areas. And I had an interesting experience with uh, trying to find a narrator for the film. I have always enjoyed a gentleman named Michael Enright from CBC. Uh, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation here, and uh, I decided to see if he would be interested in in doing the narration of the film. And I called CBC and asked how I was to get in touch with him. And um, the person there told me that I should send a a fax. This goes back a, a little while. So, and she said, make sure his name is very prominent on the um, on the fax because. You know, we get lots of them and want to make sure it's directed to him. So I wrote him a fax and put his name on the top, I don't know, 40, 50 point or something. And uh, I said, I'm doing a film, a documentary film on the life of Baha'u'llah, and I'd like to, to consider doing being the narrator for it. You know, I said, if you're interested, please call me. Here's my number. And if not, well, I guess I won't hear from you. And a couple of hours later, the phone rang and it was Michael Enright and 
the first thing he said, he said, what's with that uh, fax? He said, I thought I was getting drafted or something. <laughs> <laughs> My name was so prominent it scared me. And I said, oh, well, I was told to make it, make, you know, make sure it was prominent so you could get it. Anyway, I, uh, I said, anyway, I just wanted to know if you were interested in, um, in it. And he said, I am. <laughs> and I, I was quite surprised because I said, well, you don't even know about it. He said, that's okay. I'd be interested in doing it. So, And he did, and it was a marvelous experience. We actually did it, recorded it at uh, Jack Lynn's studio. And Jack Lynn's is a well-known musician and composer. And we, I flew back to Toronto and we did it there. And it was a marvelous day. And I suppose that's also on jmcrib.com? It is, and there's also a, a website specifically for it, though you can get it through jmcrib.com, but you can also go to thepromiseofallages.com. So I'm speaking with Jim Cribb, author, photographer, and filmmaker who released the film Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey. Why don't you tell us about the film? Sure. I, I should say it's been out for, I haven't just released it. It was out, I can't even remember when I did release. It's been out for maybe a couple of years now. So, But I got started in this with a, from a, with a phone call uh, I, I received uh, one day when I was at home on, uh, again, on the Vancouver Island. And it was uh, from Miranda, who is a, uh, the daughter of a of a family I know, um, Mary, who is the protagonist in this film. And Miranda started off in her usual direct way, telling me that her mom was dying and wanted to see Andrea and me. So that started the process. Um, Andrea and I happened to be going back on business to the Toronto area, and then we had a day off, so we flew up to Winnipeg where the family was living in spent a remarkable day with somebody dying, which is not something that occurs very often in our society. So from that, I came away not able to get much sleep that night, just thinking about the experience that we had. And I um, called them a day or two afterwards, after we got back, actually, and asked them if they would mind if I came and documented Mary's journey. And they overwhelmingly said yes. And it was a bit of a interesting conversation because I did explain to them that I would be moving in and being there 24-7 and with cameras and audio equipment and that I would be immersed kind of in their life and they had no hesitation. So maybe a week later I had my gear all together and um, flew to Winnipeg. So what moved you to take on this project? to do that you know Orn, I think I was moved so much by the spirit that emanated from the house the day that Andrea and I spent there you know in Western society we are very much focused on the grief side of, of death and dying and I haven't followed that I haven't pursued that the writings of the Baha'i faith are very positive in terms of our journeys onward and the next life and that really this this material existence here this physical life of ours is but one stage of an eternal life and so i don't uh, adopt the grief kind of feeling um, that is so prevalent especially in western society and here i found what i was looking for because there was so much positive so, and, well, so much joy in that household that I had never experienced that. And it just really sparked something in me that wanted me to share it with others. So I'm speaking with Jim Cribb, author, photographer, and filmmaker. And we're talking about his most recent film called Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey, about a woman by the name of Mary who really decides to demonstrate to her family and her friends that this can be a joyful process and a positive process and not one that's grief-stricken, as you had explained, Jim. Mm -hmm. We have an audio clip of the film, but before we play it, maybe you could tell us what we're about to hear. One of the things I discovered about Mary's process of dying was her strong belief in the choices that we make. 
And that really was what drove her to this. When I would talk with Mary quietly sometime, sitting by her bedside and asking her what motivated her, and, and indeed that's what the genesis of this clip is, you know, I really wanted to know why she had chosen this path to looking at a very positive side of, you know, her journey onward. She had a, quite a, a significant brain tumor um, that was not going to go away, and she had made the decision um, once she had learned about her diagnosis that she was not going to pursue the usual process of radiation and chemotherapy, etc., because she didn't feel that it would enhance her experience here. You know, she was not against that. She just chose not to do that for herself. And it really all was about choice. And I, I, I had to agree with her. And, and so I think the clip that most telling here is that it, it talks a little bit about Mary and the choice she made in choosing her path towards dying. You know how in your life you think, whatever, what, what will I be like if I get severe cancer or I get this or that? So there my worst scenario came true. And I just said to myself that anything I am doing, I am going to be a servant of the people around me. I am not going to leave my family devastated and in pain. And I said, I remember saying to myself, how am I going to do that? I said, I'm going to be positive all the time. I'm never going to be rude. I'm never going to be bad tempered. I'm never going to say things that injure my family because of this. And that's what I've tried to stick to. And a lot of times when you're very sick, I've seen people be the opposite of that to the people around them. So I did a lot of heavy thinking, Jim, about how was I going to smile at anyone who came through that door? When somebody comes around that corner, I feel like God has come in the room. I feel like the healing energy of the universe is suddenly pouring on me by their smile. And why would one possibly reject that by going, Oh, God, not you again. Or, or God, I'm so tired. Could you come back later? I don't want to do that. I'm speaking with Jim Cribb, whose most recent film is called Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey, which we've been talking about and we just heard an audio clip from. You've written a companion book of the same title. Uh, why did you do that? I always know the limitations, or at least I feel I know the limitations of certain media for presenting ideas and concepts. and. Film definitely has a the limitation of it. Number one, I think, is the length that you can have it. I mean, the film is 84 minutes, and I didn't think it could last any longer and still maintain an interest, people's interests. There's that one part of it. So there were things that I experienced in working with Mary on her journey and her family, of course, that I felt didn't get expressed through the film. And in addition to that, I think that words complement the film. I think words are a different means of expression, and there were things that I felt could be expressed better in words than, than in, in a film. And so I decided to embark on 
doing a companion book to it and covering areas that I felt were not covered in the film or at least covered the way that they could be through the use of words. So how do you suggest the reader and viewer using the two together? Oh, good question. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that I've even thought about that. <laughs> okay. uh, whether you whether you read one first or you watch the film first, yeah. or I'm not quite sure. I yeah. I think just kind of spontaneously off the top of my head, I would suggest maybe looking at the film first because it it is a very um, frank portrayal, and I think it may spark the interest and in then things that you may have wanted to know more about may well be covered in the book, but the other way would work too, I suppose. And Jim, where can people find the film? You can uh, find links through it through the website, jmcrib.com. Those links will bring you to the main uh, website of Death by Joy, and that's the same name, so deathbyjoy.com. So if you want to go directly to there, then You can look at some clips from the film and uh, get some more information about it there. So I'm speaking with Jim Cribb, author, photographer, filmmaker, whose latest film is called Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey. Jim, what project are you working on now? I have an ongoing, actually, Andrea and I have an ongoing project that we started many years ago, and we've called it Rising Circle. The purpose of Rising Circle is to document the effect that Baha'u'llah's teachings have on the peoples of the world. So it's a pretty ambitious project and one that I will never finish, I can assure you, in my my lifetime. But it has been uh, such a remarkable experience to embark on this and to continue it. In essence, we travel, and sometimes I travel alone, sometimes Andrea's with me, and travel to different parts of the world and meet Baha'is from various cultures, probably more in the rural side, focusing more on indigenous peoples, but all, all peoples. We just talk to them about how the Baha'i faith has affected their lives, how they became Baha'is, record this through film and ph- photographs and audio recording. It has been uh, an experience that has, at times, quite overwhelming to me, to be sitting in the uh, Kalahari with Bushmen who are Baha'is, to be uh, walking the the Andes with uh, Quechua who are Baha'is, to meet with people in France. I I can just go on and on. It's, It's just been a marvelous experience, and I'm looking forward to continuing it, and I am hoping to actually, ironically, spend time over the next year or two in North America, which is where my roots are, but I haven't participated yet in in any work on Rising Circle, and I'm hoping to do that over the next year or two and travel the widths and breadths of North America. Well, I certainly look forward to seeing that eventually come out, hopefully. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, I don't know when it will be. There will be something. I mean, I have to stop at some point, and I'm probably going to do that after I finish uh, North America and produce uh, something from that because I just have um, a wealth of recordings and information that I would love to share with people. So, Well, Jim Cribb, filmmaker, author, photographer. We spoke about his latest film, Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey. Thank you so much for sharing your work and especially this film with us. Well, I might appreciate it. It's been, uh, it's been a joy being on. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jim Cribb, author, photographer, and filmmaker, whose most recent film release is Death by Joy, An Escorted Journey. You can hear this interview and find links to his work on the website of BahaiPerspective.com and on the YouTube channel, A Baha'i Perspective. For information specifically on the Baha'i faith, you can go to the website baha'i.org, or you can call the number 1-800-22-UNITE. For the rest of the hour, I'll be playing recordings from the soundtrack, Death by Joy and Escorted Journey. I hope you join me next time on A Baha'i Perspective.
Now I have to go I want you to know That soon I'll be there Loving you in my arms again And times may be hard So hold on to your heart For soon I'll be there Loving you in my arms again So don't you stop believing For this is not the end Just take a look round that bend Soon you'll see me standing there Now Stop your heart from screaming Just close your eyes and keep dreaming Your dreams will come true I'll be there for you, wrapped up in your arms again. Now I'd like to stay. There's no easy way to look into your eyes and say goodbye until we meet again. Though times will be hard, just hold on to your heart. Soon I'll be there, loving you in my arms again. So don't And Almitra spoke, saying, We would now ask of death. And he said, You would know the secret of death, but how shall you find it unless you seek it in the heart of life? The owl whose night-bound eyes are blind unto the day cannot unveil the mystery of light. If you would indeed behold the spirit of death, open your heart wide unto the body of life. For life and death are one, even as the river and the sea are one. In the depth of your hopes and desires lies your silent knowledge of the beyond. And like seeds dreaming beneath the snow, your heart dreams of spring. Trust the dreams, for in them is hidden the gate to eternity. Your fear of death is but the trembling of the shepherd who stands before the king, whose hand is to be laid upon him in honor. Is the shepherd not joyful beneath his trembling? that he shall wear the mark of the king. Yet is he not more mindful of his trembling? For what is it to die but to stand naked before the wind and to melt into the sun? And what is it to cease breathing but to free the breath from its restless tides that it may rise and expand and seek God unencumbered? Only when you drink of the river of silence shall you indeed sing. And when you have reached the mountain top, then you shall begin to climb. And when the earth shall claim your limbs, then, and only then, shall you truly dance. I have my death, messenger of joy to thee, with 
for dost thou grieve? And I made the light to shed on thee its splendor. Why dost thou veil thyself there from? Why dost thou veil thyself? Messenger of joy to thee, wherefore dost thou grieve? And I made the light to shed on thee its splendor. Why dost thou veil thyself therefrom? Why dost thou veil thyself? Why dost thou veil thyself therefrom? Why dost thou veil thyself? In the beginning of his human life, man was embryonic in the world of the matrix. There he received capacity and endowment for the reality of human existence. The forces and powers necessary for this world were bestowed upon him in that limited condition. In this world he needed eyes he received them potentially in the other he needed ears he obtained them there in readiness and preparation for his new his new existence the power was requisite in this world were conferred upon him in the world of the matrix in the world of the matrix in the world of the matrix in this world he must prepare himself for the life beyond
until impelled to satisfy its hunger. It turneth longingly to the water and clay of the earth below. to seek a dwelling place upon the dust. An inmate of the heavens, an inmate of the heavens, is now forced to seek a dwelling place upon the dust. And having been entrapped in the mesh of its desire, findeth itself impotent to resume its flight to the realms whence it came to the realms whence it came powerless to shake off the burden solid wings that bird hitherto an inmate of the heavens an inmate of the heavens is now forced to seek a dwelling place upon the dust an inmate of the heavens an inmate of the heavens is now to seek a dwelling place upon the dust. Wherefore, O oh, my servants, defile not your wings with the clay of waywardness and vain desire. Stained with the dust of envy and hate, that ye may not be hindered from soaring in the heavens, from soaring in the heavens of my divine knowledge.
to the glory. Gather to the glory. Gather to the glory. Gather to the glory. Gather to the glory. Thou hast moreover asked me concerning the state of the soul after its separation from the body. Know thou of a truth that if the soul of man hath walked in the ways of God, it will assuredly return and be gathered to the glory of the beloved. Gathered to the to the glory gather to the glory by the righteousness of God it shall attain a station such as no pen can depict or tongue describe the soul that hath remained faithful to the cause of God and stood unwaveringly firm in his path shall after his ascension be possessed of such power that all the worlds which the It will assuredly return and be gathered to the glory of the beloved, gathered to His ascension be possessed of such power that all the worlds which the Almighty hath created can benefit through Him. It will assuredly return be gathered to the glory of the beloved, gathered to the glory of the beloved, gathered to the glory of the beloved gather to the glory gather to the glory It will end you It will end you It will end you It will end you And now concerning thy question regarding the soul of man and its survival after death survive.
that the soul, the soul after its separation from the body, will continue to progress, will continue to progress until it attaineth the presence of God. Attaineth the presence of God in a state and condition which neither the revolution of ages and centuries nor the changes and chances of this world can alter nor the changes and chances of this world can alter it will
This is WXOJLP Northampton, 103.3 FM, your Valley Free Radio Station, streaming at www.valleyfreeradio.org.